Testing, testing, testing. Testing. Can everybody hear me okay? Good. All right. Uh, so good, e uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, we're going to start these debates tonight. Uh, my name is Daniel Little, uh, ASUN Director of Elections. <coughs> and uh, I would like to thank you all for attending these debates tonight. Uh, there will be uh, th uh, three debates tonight, and each debate will consist of candidates from specific colleges. Uh, as one uh, college completes a debate, those candidates will leave the stage, and the next college will take the stage. If you would like to applaud a candidate, please wait until the debates have finished. This will allow each candidate the time that is allotted to them. Please refrain from booing out of respect for the candidates, and no flash photography, please. If you have a question you would like to ask the candidates, we will be coming around with a box, note cards, and some pens for you to write that question. We will have a moderator here to facilitate the debate. The, moder uh, the moderator will be asking these questions to the candidates. So without further ado, I will the stage to tonight's moderator, Outreach and Retention Coordinator for the Center, Every Student, Every Story, Sandra Mitrovich. Hello, everybody. After you, my friend. Thank you. I love the debates. They're always a fun time, and so I wish everyone well. Um, tonight, I will be um, asking the questions, but I'm also going to give you the rules of the debate for, for all of you that will be participating. Uh, as I was introduced, I'm Sandra Mitrovich. I work in the center, Every Student, Every Story, and uh, just down on the third floor. So welcome, everyone, tonight. The rules of the debate are as follows. The debate will be between the senator candidates from the College of Education first, the School of Journalism second, and the College of Business third. The candidates of each college will go to the stage and will be asked several questions related to their college, which, with each college having different questions. Candidates are seated in alphabetical order by last name and will be given two minutes to introduce themselves and state their platform. I will then ask the first senator candidate the first question, and they will be given two minutes to respond. Then the second candidate will be given two minutes to respond, and so on. After all candidates have responded to the first question, the first candidate will have one minute for a rebuttal, and it's optional. Then the second candidate will be given one minute for an optional rebuttal, and so on. After all candidates have responded, the second question will be asked to the second candidate and continue in the same cycle as the previous question. Each debate will consist of several questions answered by all candidates, determined by the ASUN Director of Elections, and then time permitting will be followed up by questions from the audience. And you've received your note cards, audience members. During the debate, audience members can write those questions on those note cards and a box will be provided to you uh, for you to place them in. The Director of Elections will choose questions randomly and only discard questions that have already been asked or are deemed inappropriate to the nature of this debate. Does anyone have any questions from the audience or anyone else? Okay, not seeing any questions. Um, please let's have the candidates from the College of Education step onto the stage. Do either of the candidates have any <coughs> questions before we begin the debate? No? Nope? Okay, fantastic. So now we're going to move into the debate questions. Um, I'd like to remind the audience at this time, as you had heard already before, please save your applause till the end um, and offer uh, quiet for the candidates to be able to respond. For the first question, candidate Davenport, you have two minutes to introduce yourself and your platform. Hello, I'm Isaiah Davenport. I'm currently a junior here at the University of Nevada, Reno. I'm studying human development and family studies with minors in community health science and addiction treatment services. Um, a little about me, um, my college career. Um, freshman year um, in Peavine Hall, I was in leadership council and I um, was a floor represent, uh, represent, a representative 
and I helped with um, different legislation, and I got a diversity chair position approved in Pevine Hall. Um, in addition to that, I'm a Nevada student ambassador, so I um, give uh, university tours um, to prospective students and families that want to come to the university. Also, I am a facility supervisor here at the Joe Crowley Student Union. Thank you. Candidate Rogers, you have two minutes to introduce yourself and your platform. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm a little winded. It's bad. This <coughs> is. Um, my name is Jennifer Rogers, and I am a current senator for the College of Education. My platform is inclusion and accessibility for all students. Recently, this semester, in my term, I've been working on building walkthroughs for accessibility. We have gotten a little bit of that done, and we are currently working on a university walkthrough. So we're working on all buildings to make sure they're accessible, to get some data to present to the Board of Regents. Um, I have worked on legislation for sustainability with the new dining contracts to make sure that they are what student wants. And then I am working on a piece of legislation that makes it so ADA accessibility, trying to use the right terminology, barriers are removed and to add it to President Johnson's capital campaign. I am a junior and I'm majoring in human, de wow, sorry, human development and family studies as well. And that's it. Thank you. We'll now move into the debate questions. Candidate Davenport, as the first candidate, you will have two minutes to respond to the following question. ASUN has many programs that serve and provide resources for Nevada students. What additional program would you like to see ASUN take on next year? Um, a program that I think would be really beneficial to the students here at the university that's not here already would be Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. <laughs> ASUN has many programs that serve and provide resources for Nevada students. What additional program would you like to see ASUN take on next year? I think something that would be beneficial to the students here would be um, something to do with um, healthy eating. And in, um, in regards to like, we already have packed provisions with uh, which provides food for people who might be like low socioeconomic status or like um, don't really know how to provide for themselves, but actually maybe having like an area where we actually maybe have like a garden or like um, a place where people can actually like see where our food comes from and things such like that. Thank you. Candidate Rogers, as the second candidate, you will also have two minutes to respond to the same question. Similar to candidate Davenport, I do have a really hard time thinking of new programs that we can implement. What I think would be a better way to go about things were, would be to advertise the programs that we do have and how we can further help students and then go from there. There are a lot of programs that we don't know about and I think a university garden would be a great idea to add it to pack provisions because we do have mobile Mondays mm -hmm. where we can do things and to add that to Kavner's kind of thing would be a really great idea as well. Candidate Davenport, you now have an opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. No, thank you. Thank you. Candidate Rogers, you now have the opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second question we'll now move into for this debate. Starting with candidate Rogers, you will have two minutes to respond to the following question. What do you think is the biggest challenge the university is facing today, and how do you think ASUN might be able to help address that challenge? You have two minutes. Sorry, I was typing a question. Okay. 
I think the biggest challenge that we face today is inclusion within our campus. Recently, ASUN held a town hall and something that continually came up was anti-Semitism and then just prejudice on campus. And that is something that we really need to strive for as a university to get rid of or even just acknowledge for a second and make people feel heard and then figure out how we can work together as a campus, not just as university faculty member, ASUN members, everybody as a campus to make sure we all feel included and heard and that we're kind to each other. I know that the climate survey, Speak Your Truth, just came out and that is a huge opportunity to let our university know what is going on and how we feel <coughs> on campus. Thank you. Candidate Davenport is the next candidate in line. You'll have two minutes to respond to the same question. Would you like me to repeat yes. the question? What do you think is the biggest challenge the university is facing today and how do you think ASUN might help to address that challenge? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges here at the university would be representation. I know a lot of um, students of color um, and majority of their classes don't see their representation, so it's kind of sometimes hard to succeed in those classes, especially um, with our campus being, yes, we are diverse, but not diverse in a lot of um, areas and also um, trying to promote equity over equality because I know a lot of people have the resources that they need but they weren't they aren't really sharing them or like um, trying to um, make everyone succeed so I think um, going off what um, candidate Rogers was saying um, a lot of the open forums are a good way that ASUN could make sure that students voices are heard and that everyone's opinions are viewed thank you candidate Rogers you now have an opportunity for a one-minute rebuttal not so much for a battle, but I do agree with candidate Davenport. It's so hard with diversity in the classrooms, even just in HDFS. Mm -hmm. I can only count a handful of males in each class, and the one with the most is my research class. So it's really just on all fronts that we need to be more inclusive on this campus. Thank you. Candidate Davenport, you now have an opportunity for a one-minute rebuttal. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move into the third round <coughs> of questions. Candidate Davenport, as the first candidate, you will now have two minutes to respond to the following question. As civic engagement is a core value of the university, what do you think the College of Education's role is, engaging, is in engaging in service with the community? As a senator, how would you help foster that engagement? Can you repeat the question, please? As civic engagement is a core value of the university, what do you think the College of Education's role is in engaging in service with the community. And as a senator, how would you help foster that engagement? Um, I know um, in my major at HDFS, we do a lot of civic engagement when we go to Renown and go to the hospitals and actually participate in different activities with um, people in the hospital, especially children, just educating them. But also um, the college education as a whole, we do host different um, activities like discussions where we do like mentorship, internship opportunities where we actually are um, being civically engaged. And during our HDFS, we actually do a practicum with children where we are in the classroom um, helping them learn, helping them go through their development because development is super important to children, especially at that crucial age. So I think just doing that, just continuing to go with the education and making more things like accessible to people as well as um, continuing to do like uh, what we're already doing. Thank you. Candidate Rogers, you'll now have two minutes to respond to the same question. I think a huge part of civic engagement is leading by example. So as a senator, you really need to be fully involved in civic engagement and in the College of Education, you are an educator one way or another. So something that I would like to continue doing is build off of Give Pulse and really, really promote the events and the activities that they have going on because they always have something for somebody. And then another thing would be to really help bring the College of Education into Wolfpack Weeding Week, Reading Week and make it not so much of an ASUN thing but in all of the College of Education so we can really get to these students within our communities that are underserved. Thank you. Candidate Davenport, you now have an opportunity for a one-minute rebuttal. No, thank you. 
candidate Rogers the same. We will now move on to the fourth question for this debate. Starting with candidate Rogers, you will have two minutes to respond to the following question. One of your duties as a senator is student outreach. If elected, what methodologies would you utilize to effectively reach out to your constituents? I really like to go off of the atmosphere of the students around me. So it's never just I'm going out to do my outreach. It's in every situation I have the opportunity to talk with my constituents. I am very nosy. If I hear them grumbling or being excited about something, I will always interfere in their conversation and ask what it is so that I can either change it or really help promote it. Because that's so important is to promote the good things, not only recognize the bad. So something that I like to do is sit in the LRC and eavesdrop on people. Sometimes I'll bring my name tag, sometimes I'll just be that weird person sitting at a table that tends to talk to you. Um, but again, it's not doing outreach for a set amount of time in an office that nobody really goes to. It's always being present for your constituents. And so that's what I think I'll follow. Thank you. Candidate Davenport, you now have two minutes for the same question. Would you like to repeat yes. it? Sure. One of your duties as a senator is student outreach. If elected, what methodologies would you utilize to effectively reach out to your constituents? I think a good form um, to do outreach would be social media. A lot of people in today's society are always on social media, so just um, creating Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, just getting more people involved, I think that would be a great way. Also, also hosting different events would also be a good way to do outreach and getting people um, to come to events. And also, um, like Candidate Rogers is saying, um, eavesdropping on people's conversation, <laughs> asking um, classmates about their concerns and interests about like our college and things that we can improve on. So I think that would be a good way to do outreach. Thank you. Candidate Rogers, one minute. Candidate Davenport. No, thank you. Okay. Thank you both. At this time, with the completion of these questions, we'll now move into any audience <coughs> questions that we might have. If I can receive those <coughs> questions at this time. Thank you. <coughs> Fantastic. Starting with candidate Davenport, you'll have two minutes to answer uh, the following question. What efforts will you make to ensure all constituents within your college feel empowered to approach you as their senator? Um, <clears throat> I think um, going back to social media, I think social media would be a good way because people can come up to me in person or they could say things like anonymously through like email, through Instagram, Snapchat. But I think um, just being available, maybe having like office hours that people can just come in, like if I'm at the KC, at the Joe, that people can come with, um, to me with concerns, interests, and things that can better improve our college as a whole. Thank you. Candidate Rogers, the same? I'm not good at social media. I really stink at it. My roommate typically does it because I'm really bad. So that is not one way I would use it. Um, I think the way that works best for me is to really make sure people know that I'm a learner, just like them. I'm in all of their classes. I wear sweatpants to class. I look awful. Sometimes they do too, it's okay. But to make sure I'm relatable and that whenever they see me, I don't have judgment. Sometimes I might have a bad look on my face, but that's okay. But just to make sure that they know I'm a person first and then a student leader second. And if I put myself on that level, I'm hoping that they do feel empowered to approach me. That is the best goal. I know it's not always plausible and it's not always the case, but it is the goal. And then whenever I can't make them feel empowered, I eavesdrop on their conversations and I'm the weird person that goes to talk to them. Thank you. Candidate Davenport, you now have an opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. No, oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Candidate Rogers. Okay. Thank you. With that being the end of the questions, um, I would ask you to join me in uh, thanking both candidates for tonight show, for the first debate.
We'll now have about a five minute intermission for the candidates of the School of Journalism so that they can set up on stage. Welcome back for our second round of debates. We're now going to be um, hearing from our School of Journalism candidates. The same rules addressed earlier will continue with this debate. The candidates not having any questions will go ahead and start. Candidate Hall, you will have two minutes to introduce yourself and your platform. Hello everyone, my name is Dominique Hall and I am a sophomore with a journalism major and a political science minor. During my time here at UNR, I have been involved in various different things on campus, such as being a member of the Journalism Student Council, Greek Life, a Nevada-bound representative for the Reynolds School of Journalism. Um, I've had the ASUN legislative internship, which kind of taught me the ins and outs of being a senator, and I've also been an orientation guide. All of these opportunities have taught me the importance of getting involved, being a leader, and doing public service, which is why I'm running for the Senator of the School of Journalism. If elected, I want to not only be the voice of my constituents, but also the ears of them as well, because I believe that listening and being 
a listener is what's going to improve our campus and this school in general. Um, aside from my campaign goals that I have like on my campaign, I want to push and advocate for mental health awareness on campus by looking into getting more funding um, for counselors and therapists to, to um, research these exams and start doing these exams because it's a long wait for these students who want to get a psychological exam. Um, and not only that, but I would also like to expand the opportunities within the journalism school by going out to the surrounding community and advocating for more internships in the surrounding area since we are like a travel hub and I feel like there should be more internships for hotels and stuff like that since we are in the area. And so, um, yeah, and basically being a senator requires not only representing my college, but the university as a whole. And in my term, I want to not only be the senator, but a friend to my constituents so that they feel comfortable sharing their issues with me in hopes of pr improving the school as a whole. Thank you. Candidate Quaintance, you have two minutes to introduce yourself and your platform. Uh, hello, my name is Robert Quaintance. I'm currently a freshman here in the Reynolds School of Journalism, and I have a minor in Cinema and Media Studies. Uh, I previously have been student body, and vi uh, student body president and vice president, uh, and I'm currently a member of fraternity and sorority life serving as public relations chairman and an applicant for a uh, Nevada Fit mentor. Now I'm excited to be running to be your senator for the Reynolds School of Journalism. Uh, my campaign is mainly centered around industry interactions and opportunities for all ages and demographics. Uh, currently, I'm a re recipient of the Nevada Broadcasters Association Scholarship, where I'm connected to a large majority of professionals in the journalism industry. Also, my dad has been in the radio industry for 35 years, uh, or a little bit more, and there I've been able to interact with pr professionals. Um, I speak to Eric Benici almost daily, who is the president of the Nevada Broadcaster Foundation, and there we uh, host galas and several other things with industry professionals. Thank you. We will now move into the debate questions. Candidate Hall, as the first candidate, you will have two minutes to respond to the following question. ASUN is successful in reaching out to students that are currently involved on campus through clubs and organizations. As a journalism major, what methods would you suggest ASUN utilize to reach out to students that are not already engaged on campus? I think ASUN should really utilize going to classes because um, being involved in journalism student council, which is like the main student council within the journalism school, I pretty much go to classes and like try to get students engaged and it really does work. And I feel like just these classrooms, like if you ask a teacher like, hey, can I talk to your class for a few minutes? The students will listen because they're there. And I feel like sometimes social media isn't the only reach to students. So I feel like personally going out to these classes and telling them like, hey, we have all these opportunities for you to get involved will really, let the students know and like they'll pay attention. Yeah. Thank you. Candidate Quaintance, would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, yes, please. Okay. ASUN is successful in reaching out to students that are currently involved on campus through clubs and organizations. As a journalism major, what methods would you suggest ASUN utilize to reach out to students that are not already engaged on campus? And you have two minutes. Um, currently, I believe that ASUN does do a good job at reaching out to students, but I believe that it gets a little overwhelming because it's usually front-loaded at the beginning of the year, usually in the first two weeks, and it's uh, several different organizations all trying to recruit like one person, and it kind of gets like lost. And as a fr uh, incoming fresh or a freshman this year, I kind of realized that, and I see that after the weeks come, it kind of becomes radio silence from these clubs, and you don't really hear anything about them or how to join them if you do want to join later in the semester. And I believe that uh, a good way to be doing this is to target younger students because older students are usually already involved. But younger students, if you can build that strong foundation and getting them in there early, then they'll be th uh, in the organization throughout their entire college career. And I believe doing this will be hosting like socials and like events with free food because uh, dorm food gets kind of tiring after a little bit and kids do jump at opportunities like that. Thank you. Canada Hall, you now have an opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Um, yes, I just wanted to say that uh, Senator Quint, well, Robbie, he um, mentioned that younger students, like, they're important, but I also feel like older students are also important as well, because, like, although you're a senior, like, I feel like seniors should be reached out to as well, because, like, graduating without 
being involved with anything isn't really good and like a lot of stu seniors do want to join things so I feel like email lists are really important because in the School of Journalism we're lucky to have a weekly newsletter that's sent to our email and I feel like if ASUN did something similar to that like a constant reminder like hey these are the things that's coming up that you can get involved with I think that'll really help students as well as from all ages seniors freshmen juniors all of that and it'll really help them get involved thank you Candidate Quaintance, you now have the opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Yeah, I agree with um, pushing out information to students uh, almost weekly, but I think that an email list is kind of outdated. And if you look through your inbox, you don't really, you get a ton of emails every day and you don't look at them all. I think that a better way about going about it would be short clips of curated content that we can post on social media or send out uh, like on TVs to show. And uh, just like 30 second videos where people don't have to read, they don't have to worry about that. They can just look and get all the information and then decide what they want to do from that. Thank you. We will now move on to the second question for this debate. Starting with candidate acquaintance, you will have two minutes to respond to the following question. The Nevada Wolf Shop is the one of the last, sorry, is one of the last student run college bookstores in the nation and all of their profits go back to various programs and services that support students. How would you suggest ASUN create buy-in from students so that they realize that by supporting the Wolf Shop, they are supporting the students of the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, see, I didn't even know that until just now. So I feel like um, sometimes things get lost in translation because uh, you just don't hear a whole lot of things about stuff like that. So if you kind of inform them that like, look, th like this is one of the last um, student run bookshops and they, like the funds that you put into this like you will directly receive right back would be a good way of doing that and I feel with short video packages and uh, like infographics that that'd be a good way to inform them. Thank you. Candidate Hall, as the next candidate you have also two minutes to respond to the following question. Would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, no thanks. Okay. So with my experience of being an orientation guide, I know the importance of like teaching students things at orientation and I feel like um, getting a workshop specifically for the wolf shop would really help because um, I probably am more informed just from all that I've been involved with on campus but I know that the wolf shop even offers textbooks price matching so you can even show them like um, like places that se like sell those books and then they'll match the price and stuff like that but I just feel like people don't know so maybe implementing a workshop at orientation because students can choose what workshops they want to go to and I think that would be really important and so also I feel like even a poster outside of the wolf shop that says like hey you supporting the wolf shop actually goes back to you and it lists like different things because I feel like infographics and stuff like that students won't really like pay attention to it but if they're there at the wolf shop and they're about to enter and there's a big poster that says this is what this goes to I think that'll really help students want to buy more things from the wolf shop. Thank you. Canon acquaintance, you now have the opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Yeah, I agree with the uh, kind of graphics and things that we that would be put up at the wolf shop, but I'm uh, not sure how adding something else to orientation would be beneficial because I know that sometimes the longer that things are, students start to lose interest. And so if you're just blasting them with kind of like workshop after workshop after workshop, they might kind of tune out per se. Candidate Hall, you now have an opportunity for one minute. Um, once again, being an orientation guide, I know the importance of the workshops, and so uh, we're not, we don't force students to stay at the workshops. They pretty much get to pick and choose, and so I feel like just adding one more workshop onto their, like, their schedule that says, like, wolf shop, and it explains the benefits and all that, because, like, I know a lot of students want to work there, and even if they're, like, recruiting opportunities at orientation, I think that'll really help, and it does make a big difference, because it takes an orientation guide to want the students to stay and learn more about the campus and I feel like with the staff, whatever staff they want to hire this, this summer could really do a great job in influence, influencing students to support the Wolf Shop. Thank you. We'll now move into the third question of this debate. Candidate Hall is the first candidate. You'll have two minutes to respond to the following question. What do you believe the greatest challenge is with free speech as it pertains to college campuses? How do you think ASUN can help to educate students in regards to this challenge? So um, personally, I don't think, well, free speech has a lot of guidelines under it that people like might not understand. 
So I think that's a big issue is that people don't understand the kind of like not consequences, but the drawbacks of like, they don't really think about what they say. They just think, yeah, I can say this. So I think what ASUN can do and what they've been doing is the town hall meetings because I've even attended those and I, I really like them just listening to other people because they were able to voice their opinion in a very um, respectful way and like people were able to comment on that. And I think ASUN is doing a great job with hosting the town hall meetings. And I feel like they even do a great job reaching out for students to come because the last town hall meeting, a ton of students went and I like was really preaching to other people after I went like, Next time there's a town hall meeting, I really think you should be here. And like, even when I was there, I was texting people like, you should come because this is really important. So I feel like ASUN is doing a pretty good job with those. Thank you. Candidate Qu uh, acquaintance, you'll have two minutes to respond to the same. Would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, I'm right. Um, I think an extremely modern problem with free speech uh, uh, lately has been with social media because I think that kids aren't understanding their consequences of social media. So. Uh, if you look where people have old tweets pulled up and then it kind of just ruins either like a spe specific like point in their career or just really kind of draws them back, I think it'd be important to kind of educate them that like, look, you do have the freedom to say this, but 10 years down the line, this could come back to bite you because there's just, it's just been a constant trend of just people doing dumb things on social media and it just comes back and biting them. So I think educating them and holding workshops and showing them like how to properly manage it and to, that way so you can have a successful future uh, with it. Thank you. Kenneth Hall, you now have the opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Um, <clears throat> just from like being in the School of Journalism, we really emphasize like freedom of speech and we actually learn laws and stuff like that in our upper, upper level classes. So I think even pushing that out, like telling people like, hey, this class is available because College is all about learning what you want to learn for your life, and I feel like that's a really good class that a lot of people don't know about. So I feel like even reaching out to students, like, hey, we have this class and stuff like that, not just plugging the School of Journalism, but I think freedom of speech is something that people should learn as they get into a professional career. So I feel like letting them know we have this class on our campus, you can take this and you don't have to be a journalism major, it'll really help get people the exposure to let them know about freedom of speech. Candidate acquaintance, you have one minute? Uh, yeah, I agree with Senator, uh, Senator Candidate Hall. Um, I think that the First Amendment class is extremely important, and I don't think enough people realize that journalism is a pretty good pre-law major, and especially with a large, or not large amount, but there's a minority who of undes, undeclared students who that could be tapped into to bring into the journalism school, and I feel that uh, offering that class and kind of pushing it, saying that, like, look, you don't have to be in the journalism school to take this. It is pretty interesting, and you will learn a lot, would be a good way to uh, help the school. Thank you. We will now move into our final rounds of uh, the prepared questions. Starting with candidate acquaintance, you will have two minutes to respond to the following question. Students have expressed that they do not feel safe on campus. If elected, what steps do you believe might be taken to address these concerns? Um, I think that, that uh, the feeling safety is always something that people strive after. And uh, I think with um, ASUN implemented programs such as Campus Escort and the uh, police pillars where you can press a button and like, police will come are like really good. And I think that uh, possibly like extending the campus escorts and locations that it takes you to um, would be a good way to help promote the feeling of safety because sometimes like I, I would try to use it and I'd put in an address that like is pretty close to campus and would be considered on, but it, it just said that it wouldn't take me there. So I have a feeling that um, maybe dedicating funding towards that could uh, be more beneficial to safety. Thank you. Candidate Hall, you also now have two minutes to respond to the same. Would you like me to repeat the question? Um, can you? Sure. Students have expressed that they do not feel safe on campus. If elected, what steps do you believe might be taken to address these concerns? Um, I also, th I think that exposure to certain programs would help um, make students feel safer because we do have campus walks with police officers that ASUN provides. And so basically what that is, is you can join the police officers, I believe it's the police department, but you can join them to walk around campus and pretty much you can, um, you'll be with the senators and you'll just be like, you'll go around campus and find places that are unsafe and then they'll create legislation to fix that issue. And I feel like not a lot of students know about that and it's something that's really important because if you have a lot of students on these walks and like the more people, the more issues that will be pointed out, the safer this campus would be. And so also I feel like 
a lot of people don't know about our emergency um, response things on campus. We have about, I think it's about 200 on campus. And so the response time to that is about, I think it's 40 seconds to three minutes, which I think is so important on this campus and that students should know about. So I think word of mouth, because we do have these programs, it's just that people don't know about them. And I feel like it just takes one person to tell someone like, hey, we have this, and then their friends telling other people like, come with me on the campus walk. And so I feel like exposure is all we need, pretty much. Thank you. Canon acquaintance, you now have an opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Yeah, I agree with Senator Candidate Hall. I believe that uh, exposure to programs like this would be beneficial, just kind of, especially to younger students who might not, who are less experienced in campus life, and just kind of telling them like, hey, like this is a, a thing that's available to you if you are interested. Candidate Hall, your one minute. Um, and I also wanted to like say about camp campus safety and improving it, is that anyone could uh, conduct these campus walks themselves with a big group. So even if I were elected, I could do that myself and be like, who wants to go around campus? Because it's pretty simple to write legislation and present them to the committees about, let's say, getting more lights. And so just writing legislation and getting this exposure and stuff like that, all it takes is one person to organize something. And I feel like that's something I can easily do or any other senator on this campus. So. Thank you. We are now ready to move into audience questions. If you have any questions, please make sure that they've been dropped into the box at this time. Thank you. Starting with Candidate Hall, you'll have two minutes to respond to the following question. As a senator, you are a liaison between students and administration. If elected, how would you develop and maintain relationships with university administrators? So I would maintain um, these relationships between faculty and administration just by staying in the Journalism Student Council. Even if I'm elected senator, I feel like it's so important to serve on the Journalism Student Council because we have a lot of connections to faculty, which will like, which you can easily get more connections with administration on campus. And I feel like with my time here, I made a lot of connections with faculty. So even addressing that and like being on the Journalism Student Council would really help um, having connections between students and faculty because a lot of people don't realize that Journalism Student Council has a lot of people on that serve in that club as a liaison themselves. So they can even come to the council and like be like, we need this event, like we need this. And I feel like a lot of people don't know. So just staying in that club and keeping my connections with the faculty would really help um, being a liaison between the students and faculty. Thank you. Candidate acquaintance, you also now have two minutes to respond to the following question. Um, I think that maintaining, a, or creating and maintaining um, uh, relationships with uh, the higher up figures in the university is extremely important. Uh, through day one, through my scholarship, uh, Dean Al is uh, on the board of, um, he's on the board for my scholarship, so I've had a connection with him through day one. And so I always like talk to him, ask him for advice, so I already have that established. And through him, I believe that I'll be able to uh, get to know the president of the university and kind of uh, communicate with him and yeah. Thank you. Candidate Hall, you have the opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Yes, I, <clears throat> I also like, would like to say that getting involved as I have with multiple clubs and stuff like that has really helped me to kind of earn my own um, connections with faculty, which is what I can continue to do because getting involved with clubs, there's always a club advisor and usually the club advisor will come sit in on certain meetings and like it's really easy to introduce yourself and really provide yourself with a friendly manner because a, a lot of people don't know but the School of Journalism is so small that we're on a friendly basis with our professors which I feel like is so important because they really do help and I even have a faculty member who like wants to team up with me if elected for certain goals so I feel like it's so important to maintain and like just keep reaching out to faculty and even your professors and just introducing yourself at office hours, stuff like that. And it pretty much just gets you involved with students in your class and yeah. Thank you. Canon acquaintance, you now have your one minute. Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree. Um, just because uh, at the Reynolds School of Journalism, since it is the smallest college on campus, uh, there really is just like a close culture. 
and the professors are all easily talk, talk like you can easily talk to them, but I feel that not enough students um, use office hours as they should, so I feel promoting that, that where they can go and actually build those connections themselves with professors and faculty, so they can kind of just have those uh, as they grow in the school uh, would just be extremely important just to let them know that that is a thing. Thank you. The second audience question, we're starting, well, we will start the second audience questions with candidate Queens. You'll have two minutes to answer the following. If elected, what Senate subcommittees would you want to sit on and why? <clears throat> um, something that really interests me is the budget committee. Uh, currently, uh, the president of my fraternity is the chairman of it, Hayden Grant. And he, he's the whole reason why him and my uh, big bro, he was the uh, past um, senator for journalism. Uh, they really encouraged me to run for this position. And he just tells me about how much he's learned through that position. So I, I'm really interested in being on the finance committee. Thank you. Candidate Hall, you'll have two minutes for the same question. Um, so what I, knowing what I know about the positions of a senator, you have to sit on two committees. So I would first sit on the, try to sit on the civic engagement committee, although I know that's a really popular one because one of my main emphasis of my platform is more opportunities and more involvement for students. So I feel like really sitting on the committee of civic engagement will help me just like learn the insides of getting the exposure of engagement out to students. And I would also like to sit on the committee of, I think it's government operations because I feel like not a lot of people want to do that, but I feel that it will pertain to my career in the future because I do want to be an attorney. And I feel like knowing the govern governing documents and stuff like that, that govern your university is so important for my professional career because it'll get me started on learning more about um, what it takes to govern, you know, the future and stuff like that. And I feel like looking into these documents, like, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work and it might not be as fun as budget and finance and academics and stuff like that, but I feel like it's equally important to know how to govern your university as the senator of your college. Thank you. Candidate Quaintance, you now have the opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Uh, yeah, civic engagement sounds interesting as well because uh, I, I do create a lot of video. That's what I want to do when I'm older. So I feel that creating just short packages that you can show around the TVs around school or just post on social media is a good way to kind of reach out to students and let them know like what is out there. Thank you. Candidate Hall, your one minute. Yes, and I also know that even um, if you're a new senator, you don't have to be a returning senator to apply to be the chair of these committees. And I feel like I would really want, I would be interested in um, trying to apply for the chair of the govern, governing operations just because I feel like stepping up in leadership on your committee will really help you like learn to enjoy that. And I feel like a lot of people told me it's really boring, that committee and stuff like that. But I feel like it's just really so important to my future career that I will step up in leadership on that committee and take charge of that as well. Thank you. Please join me in uh, thanking both candidates tonight. <laughs> this will mark the end of our second debate. I'd like to thank them both and also thank you. We'll now have a five minute intermission so that we can join or have the College of Business candidates set up on the stage.
Welcome back to the third round of these debates where we are going to be hearing from your candidates from the College of Business. The same rules addressed earlier will continue with this debate. Candidates at this time, do you have any questions? I just want to remind the audience, make sure that you hold your applause until the very end, please. Candidates, you'll have two minutes to introduce yourself and your platform. Candidate Murphy, you will have two minutes to respond to the, or I'm sorry, my bad. I skipped ahead because we crossed something out. Candidates, you will have two minutes to introduce yourselves. Starting with um, candidate Murphy, uh, you'll have two minutes to introduce yourself and your platform. All right, good evening. My name is Keegan Murphy, and I'm a freshman here at the University of Nevada, Reno, studying business management with a minor in political science. Although my time here on campus has been relatively short, I have learned a lot about being a member of the Wolfpack. Um, I have served as a Senate intern for the 86th session for the ACU and Senate, and I'm currently on the executive board for a social entrepreneurship club called Enactus. So I have four goals if elected to the College of Business Senate. My first goal is to work with the College of Business to increase the awareness of the Career and Corporate Outreach Center. Uh, this is a free service located on the fourth floor of the Ansari Business Building, open to all students, and they do everything from the Nevada Global Business Program to mock interviews and resume checks to the career fairs and networking events. And I believe this service is highly underutilized by the students here at uh, the university. Second, I wanna work with ASU and officers to determine possible campaign finance uh, reform laws to ensure all people are aware of the rules and laws of running a cost-effective campaign. Uh, for Senate, we are allowed to use our uh, $200 of our own money, which I feel like a lot of students don't run for Senate because that's a lot of mo uh, money for a college student. And uh, there, you also have to uh, deposit $50 for running for uh, any position. I feel like that also uh, discourages a lot of people to run. My third goal is to increase input and in favorable recommendations for affordable housing and parking on campus through the new City College Reno Council and the new mayor's administration. And then my main goal is to increase the communication of the ACUN services that are provided on campus, everything from the PAC internship grant programs to campus escort to PAC provisions. And I believe that many people would be far better off if they use the resources that they paid for to create a personal and intercollege experience. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Beltry, you'll have two minutes to introduce yourself on your platform. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Cameron Beltry. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm getting over a cold. <laughs> um, let me start over. Good evening. My name is Cameron Beltry. Um, I'm a pre-business major here at the University of Nevada, Reno. Um, I plan on emphasizing in marketing and also claiming a double major in political science and then also as well a minor in communications. Um, I just want to start off before I get into it saying thank you to my campaign manager and my family and my friends um, and also the current senators. Um, you guys have already done so much for uh, this campus, and I just want to thank you guys. Um, with that said, I'd like to get into my accomplishments. Um, a few of my accomplishments include, um, one, having the opportunity to fly to D.C. to speak with members of Senate um, about immigration reform. Um, two, I have had the opportunity to run my own online business that I have recently taken international. Uh, and my third accomplishment that I want, I'd like to state is that I um, have had the opportunity to be a head of online sales for a multi-million dollar business. Um, with that said, I'd like to now get into my goals. Um, my first goal out of the four I have, um, one being uh, to strengthen the PAC internship grant program. Um, I'd like to, well currently, the internship program is only taking 60 plus students. Um, I'd like to raise that number by reallocating money towards the program. Um, and my second uh, goal being that I'd like to create a user-friendly time schedule to organize the arrivals of PAC Transit. I know currently it's hard for students to find a uh, time to be able to uh, get to the bus or not, not knowing when the bus is coming makes it a lot harder. Um, and three, making a safer campus by installing more emergency call buttons um, and also creating awareness about this. And four, my fourth goal is strengthening the PAC-friendly business campaign to create a tighter, uh, tighter from campus to student uh, Reno community. Thank you. Again, my name is Cameron Beltry. Thank you. Candidate Watt, you'll have two minutes for your platform. Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline Watt. Um, I'm a freshman studying international business. 
So I first started getting into policy last year as a senior in high school. Um, I was a student advisor for the Board of Trustees for CCSD back in Vegas, uh, which kind of inspired me to get into education policy and reform, um, and which is why I'm sitting here today. So <laughs> uh, talking about my platform, I really want to improve the gender equity of not only the university, but the College of Business. Um, I would also like to improve the student and faculty relationships that we have here on campus. I feel like there's most definitely a disconnect that um, can change through more open channels of communication. And um, I'd also really like to improve the disconnect between our student government as well as our student body. Um, that too can be done through um, opening up more channels of communication that are convenient for students to share their ideas and their concerns. Um, if you like to get to know a little bit more about me, I am involved with two Greek letter organizations here on campus, as well as clubs including Ultimate Frisbee Club, Musical Therapy Club, Inner Varsity, um, and I also produce music on the side. I'm also an ASUN intern for the executive branch. Um, so I'd just like to end this spiel by saying I love this university and all my peers, and I'd really like to see us all succeed and grow in our chosen career fields. Thank you. Thank you. Starting with candidate Murphy, you'll have two minutes to respond to the following question. The Gateway District is part of the university master plan. If elected, how would you work with the College of Business and the university to maximize student opportunities upon its completion? Yeah, so I think that's a really good question. So the Gateway District, I know, is uh, one of the new buildings that is currently being planned to be built. Um, on this university to include the College of Business as well as some other colleges. And I believe that uh, we should have a survey put out during elections uh, upon the completion of the building, asking st specific students like what they would like to see. The, maybe we could have uh, student artwork, maybe we could have um, the landscaping outside to include maybe like a garden space to uh, produce food for pack, tr uh, pack provisions. So I would just believe reaching out to the students would be um, one of the best ways to see what we could uh, incorporate into the new Gateway District building, building for the university. Thank you. Candidate Veltri, you'll have two minutes to answer the same. I'm sorry, may you repeat the question? Absolutely. The Gateway District is part of the university master plan. If elected, how would you work with the College of Business and the university to maximize student opportunities upon its completion? Yeah, so I mean, the most important thing I think with that is uh, reminding the constituents that they have a voice, um, even as something as big as a building. Um, so a asking what they would like to be, uh, to see with, with the future plans of it. Um, and it's pretty much as simple as that, reaching out to the students and making sure that their voice is heard. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Candidate Watt, you have two minutes to answer the same. Um, can you repeat the question, please? The Gateway District is part of the university master plan. If elected, how would you work with the College of Business and the university to maximize student opportunities upon its completion? Um, yes, yeah, so the Gateway District, it, uh, it is in part one of the Noel's 2025. So um, in the Noel's 2025, it says um, that it really needs to have um, good transportation. It's going to accommodate all students as far as like groceries, housing. A lot of different things are set in there for um, the Gateway District. So in terms of business, the College of Business and what we have to offer as a college to um, contribute to this development, um, I feel like the College of Business has a stronghold on our community um, as far as different businesses go. And I feel like we can incorporate a lot of their resources into bringing it into the Gateway District for our students. That way there's um, just a lot more networking that can go on for our students to gain more resources from our community. And it not just being a university attri attribute, but a community um, development as well. Thank you. Candidate Murphy, you now have the opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. No, thank you. Candidate Veltri. No, thank you. Candidate Watt. No, thank you. Thank you all. Next question that we will be asking all of our candidates. We'll begin with candidate Veltri. You'll have two minutes to answer the following question. As we know, internships can be a wonderful experience and opportunity for university students to gain transferable work skills and networks. If elected, how would you work as a senator to increase college internships on campus and in the community? Yeah, so I mean, um, it's part of my goal to uh, strengthen the PAC internship grant program. Like I said, uh, it's currently only um, accepting 60 plus students. 
into the program, I think that number really would be benefited, would be beneficial to be raised. Um, and if reallocating money uh, makes makes things hard and, and trying to get more students, I think even just bumping the internships, intern, accepted interns uh, pay would be very beneficial to the students. And I think internship is, is so beneficial to everyone here because that's kind of what we're here for is to get the, the networking that we need to be able to get into the uh, workforce that we plan to. Um, so just reallocating money towards the PAC internship grant program. Um, currently the student wages are at $12 um, an hour, uh, which sounds pretty large, but I think with a lot of the work that they're accepted to do, it could be raised or more students could be accepted into the uh, program and that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Candidate Watt, you have two, two minutes to answer the same. Yes, so um, as we all know, as undergraduate students, internships are extremely important for us to set a path for our future um, and really get into our career field. Um, I believe that our school does a lot in terms of trying to get us to network with students and um, really expressing the importance of networking with our community to get internships. Um, and I would really like to allocate more resources to the career studio um, for them to keep doing more events, just like the, the career events that they're doing this week and this past week. Um, I think that it's extremely important for us to support that um, and just allow them to host as many of those events as possible and then educate our um, student body of them so that they can get the internships they need. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Murphy, you have two minutes to answer the same. Yeah, so I agree with my uh, the fellow candidates. I believe right now the PAC internship gr grant program, only about 50 students get it and only $75,000 out of the $2.7 million budget of ASU and are allocated toward it. So I believe reallocating money toward this um, internship grant program could greatly benefit the students here on campus. Also specifically for the College of Business, I believe using the Career and Corporate Outreach Center through the Wolfpack Shadow Program, we can possibly see if we can um, maybe start to make some more internships through our car co corporate partners, sorry, uh, such as Microsoft, ITS Logistics, Intuit, uh, those certain businesses. I believe it is very important for all students to have the opportunity to complete an internship program, especially if uh, Nevada employers are looking to hire uh, students directly out of Nevada to keep students and workers in Nevada. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Viltry, you now have an opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. Um, I would just like to add a comment. Um, I know that uh, the possibility of adding internships to the people we have uh, currently with the PAC Friendly Business Campaign, the businesses in the local Reno community, um, adding internships with those those uh, local businesses will strengthen the, I believe, strengthen the, the ties to the Reno community and University of Nevada Reno itself. So I think adding internships with those, with those businesses is a possible idea and it would just do nothing more than, or, it would do nothing but strengthen the, uh, the current programs we have standing. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Watt, you now yeah, have a minute? Thank you. No, thank you. Candidate Murphy. Uh, yeah, I agree with Cameron. I believe that strengthening ties within the city and the university is essential, especially a part of a No Walls 2025, and I believe that will uh, lead our community here at the PAC. Um, um, it would just create more, um, a collective uh, partnership within the city. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move into the third round of questions. Candidate Watt, you will now have two minutes to answer the following question. As the ASUN Wolf Shop is a student-owned bookstore, what business initiatives would you suggest they undertake to better serve students and increase student loyalty to the Wolf Shop? Um, yeah, so I think our wolf shop is very cool. Um, I don't know if you guys know all of it, but the fact that it's student ran and the fact that it gives so much to our student body is extremely impressive and there's only a couple other universities um, that do that. So um, it's very impressive in itself as it is right now, but I think that there also could be improvements. Um, I think that they should really push um, for sustainability um, within the wolf shop. They should push for, um, you know, putting more, um, does, uh, destinations of the Wolf Shop like on campus and that will offer more jobs for um, our students here on campus uh, and as well as just um, promoting different businesses to come and sell like local products and stuff like that and just that would strengthen um, our community um, relationships by having our students purchase products um, that are community owned and community promoted. Thank you. 
Thank you. Candidate Murphy, you now have two minutes to answer the same. Yeah, so I also think it's pretty impressive how the ASU and Wolf, or the Wolf Shop owned by every single student, it benefits every single student. It's one of the last um, student-owned uh, stores in America, so I think that is pretty cool. Um, it benefits every student, like I said, and I would advertise the services of it more, especially in the Great Basin location. I know not a lot of people like, know that you can go there, and a lot of people go there for like scantrons and like just quick purchases, so I would uh, increase the awareness of that. Also, I'd increase the awareness of the loyalty program. When, like, whenever I check out there, I do you have like the Wolfpack loyalty program, and I don't really know what that is. So I think if more students uh, took awareness of that, then more students would be willing to um, buy their materials at the Wolf store. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Veltri, you have two minutes to answer the same. Yeah, so I agree with my fellow candidates. Um, I think it's really cool how the, uh, how it's just student ran. Um, so advertising that it's student ran, I feel like gives that push to students, letting them know, um, or even if they didn't already know, um, and adding it onto advertisement, saying that money comes back to the university um, because it's student ran is so essential. Um, I feel like it gives students the reason to buy at the Wolf Shop instead of somewhere else, and that creates the loyalty that we're, that we're looking for. And then also, um, going back to the loyalty program, very essential. Uh, the discounts, I think it's really cool how we do Win It Wednesday for the basketball team and such things, that it creates that, that community. Um, thank you. Thank you. Candidate Watt, you now have an opportunity for one minute? No, thank you. Okay. Candidate Murphy? No, thank you. Candidate Veltri? No, thank you. Thank you. We're now moving into the audience portion of questions. Thank you. Starting with candidate Murphy, you'll have two minutes to answer the following question. The Business Student Council plays an important role in the College of Business. If elected, how do you plan on working with them to improve the lives of students? Yeah, so um, when I've been campaigning, I actually went and spoke to the Business Student Council and they're really friendly and I think a lot of people have a stigma about them that they're hard to approach. Um, they're really open to listening to um, advice given to them and I believe working with the College of Business Student Council could allow us to have a better connection with all clubs on campus and actually one of my goals is to visit at least each club once each semester within the College of Business as a way of outreach and to see what the students um, are wanting from us as senators and I believe uh, using the Business Student Council as a liaison between us and the administration is um, a great way to do this. Thank you. Candidate Veltri, you'll now have two minutes to answer the same. <clears throat> so to reach out to the Business Student Council, I'd plan to email. I noticed that a lot of clubs and organizations are very responsive to emails. Um, and then also I would like to set up uh, a visit, be able to, being able to visit the club to get in, uh, very direct feedback, um, showing them that I'm a person, that I'm willing to listen to what they have to say and try to implement whatever they have to say and what they think could, could help improve this college. I believe that the whole club is, is based on business, the whole Ansari building, the whole business idea of itself. Um, so why not listen to people who have at least some knowledge on the, on the idea? Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Watt, you'll have two minutes to answer the same. So as a senator, it is my role to be a voice for our students, and that also means the Business Student Council. Because there's such a prominent group um, within the college, it's extremely important for um, us as senators to go sit in on meetings and um, discuss if they have like a public comment period, discuss with them our goals for the college as well as their goals and um, just collaborating on how we can meet those goals throughout our session. Um, I, it's, I can't express how important it is to um, really strengthen the dynamic that we have um, between all clubs on campus um, that are business affiliated. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Murphy, your one minute rebuttal? No, thank you. Candidate Veltri? No, thank you. Candidate Watt? No, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the second audience question. Candidate Veltri, you'll have two minutes to answer the following. What new resources would you like to see made available to students in your college and across the university? 
I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. What new resources would you like to see made available to students in your college and across the university? Yeah, so it kind of goes back to my goal of creating a more user-friendly time schedule to organize the arrivals of PAC Transit. Um, I like to create this a, re a resource because I think it's very hard for students to be able to fit into their schedule. Um, being able to, I mean, like, you have to be able to leave early somewhere to be able to make it to your class. And if you're waiting for the bus, you're not going to be able to do that because you've already spent so much time waiting for the PAC Transit. Um, so I think creating a, a time schedule for the PAC uh, Transit is so essential um, in getting students to their everyday classes. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Watt, two minutes for the same. Uh, so I'm very passionate about our homeless demographic here on campus and in our community. Um, I personally believe that there aren't enough resources or they're not promoted enough for the homeless students that are a part of our student body. Um, there are quite a few that we kind of just don't recognize or we just don't promote um, getting them the resources that they need. Um, just regular homeless students as well as um, students in between homes, um, I feel like our, our university can do a lot better in providing resources to them um, and promoting the resources that we already have. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Murphy, your two minute. So I have a few ideas of new resources that could be added by the uh, ACUN. First of all, I would like to um, increase the PAC provisions here on campus. I believe that, like, by adding clothing, such as winter clothing, for students who maybe aren't used to uh, winter conditions, as well as adding more sustainability, because that's a big important issue here on campus. I believe uh, increasing that would definitely um, make students happier. Also, I believe at orientation as a freshman, there should be an ASUN workshop where we get to learn about the different internships as an ASUN, at, if you were an ASUN, as well as what ASUN does, how, like the apps you should download before you come to campus. Also, um, I would like to increase campus escort. I believe that it'd be cool to have golf carts run just specifically on campus because sometimes when you take a van, you have to drive all the way around campus because there's not enough parking lots on campus. So I feel like expanding that service would be uh, beneficial to students. Also, uh, better safety um, through legislation passed by ASUN, such as the lighting um, on Evan Street. I believe that safety starts with uh, good visibility, and I believe that is also something that is very important on campus that could benefit the students. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Beltry, your one minute. So besides the PAC Transit, I would like to make a safer campus by, like I said, implementing more emergency call buttons. Currently, we only have 25 of those uh, tower style phones currently um, and I think that these towers are a lot more proactive than cameras cameras tend to I mean obviously they they record the incident that already happened with these emergency call buttons we'll be able to the students will be able to uh, press the button and receive help from uh, the proper the proper people to be able to assist in the situation whatever the situation may be um, so I think implementing more of these emergency call buttons it's very important and could be a very uh, useful resource to constituents. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Watt, your one minute. No, thank you. Candidate Murphy. Um, another service I think that could be increased uh, through ASUN legislation by the Senate would be to create a 24-hour study space on campus. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in thanking all of our candidates for joining us this evening. At this time, to be able to wrap up all of our debates for this evening, I'd like to welcome back up to the stage our Director of Elections to close us out for the evening. All right, well, I'd like to thank you all again for attending. Uh, so I just have a couple quick reminders here. Uh, so the next debate is going to be the executive debate, uh, the general election debate, and that will be on Monday, March 11th, 2019, uh, at 7.30 p.m. In, the, uh, in this very room in uh, Ballroom A. Uh, this debate will be comprised of the presidential and vice presidential candidates, uh, and I hope to see you all there. Uh, and I would also like to thank our moderator for tonight, Sandra, uh, for being the moderator. So if we can get a round of applause for her. 
absolutely. Uh, and then after that, uh, I'd just like to remind you all that to vote on Web Campus on March 13th and 14th, as those are the days of voting for the candidates. Uh, other than that, I'd like to wish you all a good night, and thank you for attending and drive safe. <laughs>